نعم وحكموه ورضوا بما حكم في وضع ذاك الحجر الأسود ثم قريش when they were building the Kaaba um, they disputed one another um, how are they going to agree on who's going to put the black stone in are you with me they differed amongst themselves Ibn Ishaq he mentions he said inna qaba'ila min Quraysh jama'at al-hijarat libinaiha they came and they gathered all of the stones to build the Kaaba. When the Kaaba was done, the black stone was left. How is the black stone going to be put in there? So, Aba Umayyat ibn al-Mughirat ibn Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Makhzumin. He said, and that day he was a son of Quraysh. He was the oldest man in Quraysh. He said to them, listen, I know every tribe wants to claim fame, reputation, name, and say we were the ones who put the black stone in there. Everybody wants to say that. And it, there's gonna, it could lead to tribal war because of this black stone. It could lead to it. And they were willing to fight for it. So he said to them, listen, about Umayyat ibn al-Maghira, was from the people of Makhzum, Bani Makhzum. He said, and he was the oldest man, so they respected him because he was the oldest. He said, I have a plan. The first man that walks into that door, let's, let, let's make him the hakam, the judge between us. And Allah made the first one to enter from that door being Nabi Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He entered onto them and then they said, Hadha al-ameen, this is the truthful one, the trustworthy one, Nabi Muhammad. They were really happy. Radina, we are all pleased with him. Every one of us, there's no exception. Radina, hadha Muhammad. That is Muhammad. Um, when they told him about it, the Prophet ﷺ, he told them, all of you guys grab a cloth. They placed the black stone in that cloth. He told all of the tribes to grab the cloth and they all grabbed the cloth from the sides. And when they, kept, when they got close to the stone, they all carried it together. He ﷺ, was the one who placed it inside the Kaaba. He put it in there. And so every tribe, what did they do? They participated in carrying the, the, carrying, uh, the stone. And this is another thing which is how Nabi Muhammad was part of his community. It is very important. He was with his people. He, this is before he became a prophet, of course. But he was solving their problems and their issues. And so we, some of us, when we're seeking knowledge, the minute we learn the deen of Allah, Azzawajal, what we do is we forget about our families and the people we're from. And uh, our household. Naam. وبعد عام أربعين أرسلا في يوم الاثنين يقينا فانقلا. And when he reached the age of forty, he became a prophet. صلى الله عليه وسلم. He was sent to what? He was sent to the people. كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا. He was sent down to the what? The people. As a warner and one who's giving glad tidings. صلى الله عليه وسلم. And that's based on the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim. من حديث ابن عباس he said بعث رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لأربعين سنة the messenger became a prophet at the age of 40 فمكث بمكة ثلاثة عشر سنة يوحى إليه and he stayed in Mecca for how many years? 13 years ثم أمر بالهجرة فهاجر عشر سنين and then he went to Medina and he stayed there for 10 years ومات وهو ابن ثلاث وستين سنة and the messenger died when he was how old? 63 years of age what was the day that he was sent out as a prophet? We know the age. He was 40. What day was it? It was on a Monday. And that is with certainty. We know 100% that the prophet was sent down on a Monday because of the hadith. When he was asked about the fasting of a Monday, he said, That was the day I was born. And it was the day I was sent. The revelation was sent on to me. Naam. في رمضان أو ربيع الأول وسورة قرأ أول المنزل. Here he says في رمضان the messenger was sent out. When was he sent out? In Ramadan. أو ربيع الأول. And some scholars they said no, it's ربيع الأول. So there's a difference of opinion. Um, there is no dispute that he was sent on a Monday. Like in the month in which he was sent out, there are different opinions. There are different opinions. The ones who said it was in Ramadan. What was their evidence 
Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. They took this ayah and they used that as an argument. The first, that was their evidence. وَصُورَةُ تُقْرَى أَوَّلُ الْمُنَزَّلِينَ And the first portion of the Qur'an that was sent down was what? The first six verses of Surah Al-Alaq. That's based on Hadith Al-Sahihayn and Hadith Aisha. Naam. ثُمَّ وُضُوءَ وَالصَّلَاةَ وَالصَّلَاةَ عَلَّمَهُ جِبْرِيلُ وَهِيَ رَكَعَتَانْ مُحْكَمَهُ Jibreel taught the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What did he taught him? teach him? Wudu and he taught him the prayer and two rak'a which were muhkama. Muh muhakkama. He taught him what? This is based on the hadith and Imam Ahmad and Ibn Majah and Hakim and others narrated on the authority of Zayd ibn Haritha. Mawla al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet said, Anna Jibreel atahu fi awwali ma uhiya ilayhi. When the Prophet revelation was first sent on him, Jibreel came to him. Fa'allamahu al-wudu'a wa salata And he taught him the wudu' And he taught him the salah. فلما فرغ من الوضوء أخذ غرفة من ماء فنضح بها فرجه. And when he finished the wudu, he took a, a handful of water and he sprinkled it on his private part. This hadith is what the Sheikh is trying to rely on. Like in some scholars, they weakened it because in its senad is Abdullah ibn Lahia. Abdullah ibn Lahia is weak, so they weakened it because of that. Um, Sheikh Albani said it's authentic. He said, Abdullah ibn Lahia, he has a mutaba'ah, he has another person helping him and supporting him. So there's a difference of opinion based on this hadith. If you see the hadith to be authentic, then of course this event will be correct for you. And if the hadith is weak, then you won't see this event having taken place. Ma'am. ثم مضت عشرون يوما كاملة فرمت الجن نجوم هائلة. 20 days went by. After he became a prophet, after 20 days of being a prophet, the jinns, the jinn, the jinn, they faramatil jinna. Jinn here are the ones we call mustariq sam'a. Allah says in the ayah surah, surah al jinn, وَأَنَّا لَمَسْنَا السَّمَاءَ فَوَجَدْنَاهَا مُلِيَتْ حَرَسًا شَدِيدًا وَشُهُبًا وَأَنَّا كُنَّا نَقْعُدُ مِنَا مَقَاعِدَ لِلسَّمْعِ فَمَنْ يَسْتَمِعِ الْآنَ يَجِدْ لَهُ شِهَابًا رَصَدًا Allah is talking about the jinns who try to listen. There were some jinns, what they did to one another is, they went and they climbed each other. And they climbed and they climbed and they climbed. This is after 20 days of the Prophet being a prophet. And they wanted to listen to what was, what was being said in the sky. And as they were listening, a star was thrown at them. And it shot them. And when it shot them, they fell down on each other. And when they fell down on each other, they said to themselves, something big has happened. It's not a, something big has happened. The sky has been locked. Locked. Can't, we used to just listen. Things were easy. Something big has happened. We need to find out. So they came down on the earth and they went and they went on the earth to find out what took place. Pay attention. They went and they traveled and they traveled and they were traveling and they came into contact with the Prophet in Ta'if when he went to Ta'if. Are you with me, brothers? Those same jinns that were looking for what took place. It took them a while to find out who it was until they came to the Prophet ﷺ. And they will see that later, inshallah, the author is going to mention it. Now. ثم دعا في رابع الأعوام بالأمر جهرة إلى الإسلام. Four years. Now the author is going to go into a da'wah al-jahriya and a da'wah al-sirriya. The messenger's da'wah in Mecca, he was what? He was hiding his da'wah for the beginning. He wasn't allowed to speak for as he wished. Three years of those, the first three years, what was he doing? He was hiding it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His da'wah was private and was secret. And that's why the ayah came down, فَاسْدَعْ بِمَا تُؤْمَرْ وَعَرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Then he made his da'wah public. Okay, when the ayah came down in Surah Al-Hijr, his da'wah became public. He pronounced, he proclaimed it. 
And this was the fourth year after he became a prophet. On the fourth year, that's why he said, On the fourth year, he was, so first three years, it was private and he was hiding it and he was saying it in closed doors and people were gathering in Daru Arqam. And then after that, Allah said, Fasta' bima tu'mar. Fasta' Come out. And he came out, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah told him, وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ Turn away from the pagans. Don't fight with them. Don't argue with them. Just spread your message. Naam. وَأَرْبَعٌ مِّنَ النِّسَا وَاثْنَا عَشَرْ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ الصَّحْبِ كُلٌّ قَدْ هَجَرْ Naam. إِلَى بِلَادِ الْحُبْشِ فِي خَامِسِ عَامْ وَفِيهِ عَادُوا ثُمَّ عَادُوا لَا مَلَامْ The author, rahimahullah, here he mentions the two hijrah that were done to Abyssinia. Habasha, they did how many hijrah to it? One, and they did another one again. He said, وَرَابِعٌ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَثْنَا عَشَرْ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ The people who did hijrah at the beginning were how many? Four women and how many men? 12 men, 12 men. So Abyssinia, twice the hijrah was done. The first time they went to Habasha, remember they, the da'wah in Mecca wasn't going, people were getting killed, harmed physically. So four women and 12 men, they went to Habasha. That's, that's the first time. Kullun qad hajar ila bilad al-hubshi. They went to bilad al-habasha. Fi khamis amin. This was in the fifth year of the Hijriah. After the Prophet proclaimed his da'wah and he came out publicly. One year after that, he told them, leave, leave, leave. Because the heat became too much. Are we all together, brothers? So 12 men and 4 women went. Okay? Wafihi adu. Then they came back. Why did they come back? They were given a false information. They were told Muhammad Sallallahu da'wah spread. There's so much khair that's happened. Makkah Nabila Muhammad took, it, took over. So they were given a false information. They came back. And when they came back, they realized it was not real. They went back again. They went what? They went back again to Habasha. Naam. Thalathatun hum wa thamanoon rajul wa ma'ahum jama'atun hatta kamul wa hunna ashru wa thamanin thumma qad now he mentions the second time they went to Abyssinia after they came and they realized it was a false news, fake news. It was what? Fake news. It wasn't real news. And they came to Mecca and they saw what happened. What did they do? They did a U-turn. And this time the numbers were more now. The numbers were more. ثَلَاثَةٌ هُمْ وَثَمَانُونَ رَجُلٌ How many men? 83 men. Okay. And how many women this time? 18 women they went okay ثم قد أسلم في السادس حمزة الأسد and on the 6th year of the Hijriya who became a Muslim no 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 the 6th year in Mecca the 6th years not Hijra the 6th sixth, the sixth year in Mecca who became a prophet حمزة الأسد the lion حمزة became a prophet sorry حمزة became a Muslim حمزة became a what he became a Muslim who is حمزة yeah? Just put your hand up, whoever knows who Hamza is. Yeah. Who is Hamza? Anything else? Put your hand up if you know anything else other than that. Yeah. No. What are you, what are, what are, what's his other relationship with the Prophet? Yeah? yeah? He's Akhuhu min al They were best friend, best friend from the same woman. We'll see who the woman is, inshallah, soon. So they were brothers as well from one angle. They were both breastfed from the same woman. Hamza was breastfed from the same woman as the Prophet. And this, they were also, it was also his uncle. Days after him, who took Islam? Who took Islam a couple of days after that? Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Umar... His Islam was a virtue for the Muslims. The Ahlul Sirah, they mention, Umar was the only one who made his hijrah to Medina public. They say he was the only one who made his hijrah to Medina public. He proclaimed it. He went to Quraysh when they were in their assembly. And he said, Quraysh, 
I'm going Mecca. I'm going Medina. I'm leaving. Tomorrow is my departure. Okay? Every one of you guys know that. Any woman, any man who wants his wife to widow and his mother to lose him, then inshallah, follow me. Come after me. I'm, he said, I'm taking this route. This is a route I plan to take, inshallah. Just everyone know. <laughs> they said that Khalid ibn Walid and Umar ibn al-Khattab, if they walked in the market of Uqadah, the Suq al if they walked, they were the only two that would stick out. They were tall, very strong men. Yeah? I came across it. I don't know its authenticity. I'm not a but I'm simple when it comes to the seerah. I, I take many, many aqwal. Because the seerah, you don't have to be very strict on it, by the way. That it was said that Umar was so strong and tough that if he sat on a horse, he would turn into a donkey. His legs would touch the floor. And they said that he would not use a rein for his riding beast, his horse. They said he wouldn't use it. He would grab the hair of the, the horse. He would grab the hair of the horse. And one time they said, <laughs> he was riding on a horse and the horse went, wanted to go right or left and he went in the opposite direction and he broke the neck of the horse. Qutub al mentioned that. The strength of who? Umar radiallahu anhu. So he was an honor when he came into Islam. Islam wal muslimin. When he took Islam, it was an honor for Islam. As for the way he took Islam, where he went to his house and all of that, that's not authentic. Like, and again, don't be too tough on it. Things like this can be narrated simply. And the Qutb al-Sirah, they mention it. Like, it's not authentic now. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. وبعده خديجة توفيت من بعد توفيت 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 من بعد أيام ثلاثة مضت. In these two lines, he talks about the death of Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle. Abu Talib died, and right after her died Khadija, and this was the ninth year of the the Prophet's prophecy. Nine years of being a prophet, she died. Khadija died, and Abu Talib died. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was how old this time? He's 40, 49 years of age. Abu Talib, who was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uncle, who took care of him as a child, he died. He could be said that he was Nasirul Lin Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa Mu'aziran Lahu. He was one who aided the Prophet, helped him, supported him. His wife Khadija, she also died, according to the strongest opinion from the people of knowledge. The scholars, they unanimously agree by ijma' that they both died in the same year. Like in they, they dispute who died first. Okay? And they also dispute what was the duration between the two. Okay? And the author here, he took the opinion that was the duration between the two of them is what? Three days. Naam. وَبَعْدَ خَمْسِينَ وَرُبُعٍ أَسْلَمَا جِنُّ نَصِيبِينَ وَعَادُوا فَعَلَمَا the jinns that I was talking about before, who saw the Prophet are praying, and they heard his Quran, and they said, This, <laughs> this is why the Sama was locked. This is why we could not hear what we wanted to hear. They took Islam when they what they heard. Okay? Those jinns, they're called Jinnu Nasibin. They took Islam. And the Prophet it was a, he was sallallahu alayhi wa at this time. Uh, 50 years of age. So it's 50 years and what? Three months. Because the word rubu is one third, right? So that's three months, right? One fourth, sorry. One fourth. One fourth, sah. It's how many months? Three, right? Three months. So three months, five, 50, the Prophet was 50 and three months. Who took Islam? The jinn. Ibn al-Jawzi mentioned that in his Sifatul Safwa, he said, فَلَمَّا أَتَّتْ لِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى سَلَمْ خَمْسُونَ سَنَةً When the messenger became 50, وَثَلَاثَةُ أَشْهُرٍ and three months, قَدِمَ عَلَيْهِ جِنُّ النَّصِيبِينَ فَأَسْلَمُ The jinns came and they took Islam. They believed in him. And this was mentioned uh, 
by Ibn Kathir in his tafsir, he said, وَذَكَرَ مُحَمَّدِ بْنِ إِسْحَاقٍ عَنْ يَزِيدِ بْنُ رُمَانٍ عَنْ مُحَمَّدِ بْنُ كَعَبٍ الْقُرَضِيِّ قِصَّةٌ خُرُوجِ الرَّسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى طائف طائف ودعائه إياه من الله عز وجل وإيبائهم عليه فذكر القصة بطولها وأورد ذلك الدعاء الحسن The messenger, he called the people of Ta'if to Islam and he told them, take Islam, believe in Allah, become... They didn't want to take it, right? Don't worry. Allah has other creation. The jinn took Islam. They took Islam. And the Prophet made a dua. He said, Allahumma ilayka ashku da'fa quwwati. Oh Allah, I complain to you the weakness of my, my physical weakness. I complain to you, oh Allah. Wa qillatu hilati. And my ability and strength to make things happen is very low and it's, I can't make things happen. When he said that dua, the prophets, the jinns came. And they took Islam and they became believers. When they took Islam, wa'adu fa'lama. Wa'adu fa'lama means what? They went back and they taught their people. They became warners. They became what? Du'atan ila tawheedi. They went and called their families and their people straight away to tawheed. Are you with me, brothers? The jinn. They didn't call to anything else but tawheed. And that's in the Quran that Allah mentioned that subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah said, وَإِذْ صَرَفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنَ فَلَمَّا حَضَرُوهُ قَالُوا أَنصِتُوا فَلَمَّا قُضِيَ وَلَّوْا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِمْ مُنذِرِينَ They went back to their people doing what? مُنذِرين ما معنى مُنذِرين They were warning them. Warning them of what? Look at the Mufassirin what they said about warning them. They were warning them of shirk, shirk, shirk. And the dangers of shirk. And where it can lead them to. Naam. Ayah. Thumma ala saudata amda aqadahu fi ramadana thumma kana ba'dahu. Aqadu ibnati al-siddiqi fi shawwali. The author, rahimahullah. Thumma ala sauda. Sauda binti zam'a. He married her. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Soda was previously married by the, a man by the name of As-Sakaran ibn Amrin. As-Sakaran ibn Amrin was her husband. And uh, they both traveled to Abyssinia, her and her husband. When they came back to Mecca, he stayed with her, her husband in Mecca and he died. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he married Soda in the month of Ramadan before he migrated to Medina for two years. Two years before he migrated to Medina, he married her. And some said, no, three years. Okay? One of the virtues of this woman, Sauda bint Zam'ah, and one of the qualities of her characteristics is, أَنَّهَا آثَرَتْ بِيَوْمِهَا Aisha. Sauda bint Zam'ah, she gave her day to Aisha. She gave her day to Aisha. Remember, she was the, she, the Prophet ﷺ married her at an old age. She was very old. So, so when the Prophet married after Soda, when the Prophet married after Soda, of course the women were younger than her. So she realized that she's very old and she sensed and she felt that there could be a chance that the messenger might divorce you. She thought that he might divorce you and he might leave you. She felt that. And so she wanted not to lose the opportunity of being from the wives of the Prophet in Jannah. Because Allah says, Al-Haqna bihim dhurriyatahum wa ma alatnahum min amali min shay. That the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they would be with him in Jannah. One of the benefits uh, of this is that Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was asked, "How is it that the Prophet's wives will be in a higher station in Jannah than the Prophet's?" So, the Prophet's wives are going to be in a higher station in Jannah than all the other Prophets. Because who are they with? Nabi Allah Muhammad. Are you with me, brothers? He, uh, Shaykh al Islam Taymiyyah, took from this that even if a person's station is low and their spouse can take them to a higher level. Are you with me, brothers? If you didn't deserve this level because of your partner, you can get a higher station. Are you with me, brothers? So if you've married a noble person, a righteous wife, or your wife, she's, you, or the husband married, or the woman married a righteous man. Her husband was really righteous. If she wants to be in Jannah with him, because of what she still saw from him and how noble he was, it's not wise for her to marry after him. Uh, 
And if she does, maybe she should marry somebody who's what? Better than him, not someone who's got more money. Now, this is a smart believer. He thinks of who's better that can take him to a higher station in Jannah. That's how you need to think. Yeah? So, so that she gave her day to Aisha and she said, Ya Rasulullah, my day to Aisha, I just want to be your wife. And so Aisha used to have how many days? She had two days with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This min khasa'isiha radiallahu ta'ala anha. This is from her virtues. That her heart was connected to the Day of Judgment and where she's going to be in Jannah. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he married her in the month of Ramadan and then after her he married Ibnatu Siddiq. He married Aisha after her. Aisha bint Abi Bakr in Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anha. The Prophet married her. He married Aisha in the month of what? Shawwal. It, before what? Before the Prophet migrated, he married Aisha. Some said two years. Some said, two, some said three years. Ramadan was who? Soda. And the month after Ramadan is what? Who was Shawwal? They were the same year, Aisha and Soda. Okay, pay attention. The same year. Two separate months from each other. If you take this belief, Aisha Soda is two years before he migrated, then Aisha has to be two. If you take the opinion that Soda was three years before he migrated, then you have to take the opinion that Aisha was also three before he migrated. Because they were both in the same year. Okay? Like in Aisha, the consummation happened when? After he migrated, alayhi salatu wasalam. What are the virtues of our mother Aisha? The virtues of our mother Aisha is that he loved he, her the most. His wives, he loved her the most. Number two, that she was the only virgin he ever married. Number three, the revelation used to come down on the Prophet وسلم, and he would be lying on her lap. Our mother Aisha. Number four, she is a woman and she cried, she specifically cried when she was informed that there came down verses. Revelation, Quran sent down, clearing her from the allegation of zina. She said, I knew Allah will clear me. And I knew Allah was going to clarify my situation to the Prophet, that I wasn't what was said about me. But she said, I never fathomed. I never thought to myself that there will come ayat in the Quran that the people would have to pray salah with that would say that I am free from this allegation. I never thought that, she said. She started to cry. Allah cleared her name from an allegation. Imagine Allah took it upon himself to free Aisha from this allegation. And that could only mean that she's a valuable woman, a noble woman, radiallahu ta'ala anha. And the fifth, right, is that Aisha was the most knowledgeable woman from the wives of the Prophet There was no woman more knowledgeable than her. Afqahu nisa'ihi alayhi salatu wasalam. Rather, she is the most knowledgeable woman in this ummah. Not just the wives of the Prophet. There is no woman more knowledgeable than Aisha in this ummah. The most knowledgeable. وَلِذَلِكَ ah. ibnu Zarkashi He has a book. He called it Istidrakatu Aisha ala ba'd al-Sahaba. Aisha correcting some of the companions. Some of the Sahabas will say things and she will say, that's not true. That's wrong. And she will correct them. He compiled that. You see, last but not least, the last virtue that I want to mention for Aisha is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died and he was lying on her chest. Radiallahu anha wa an zawjati nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You see, Fatima, she saw the Prophet ﷺ being dragged. Because every woman wanted the Prophet. This is, remember, they are the wives of the Prophet. They love the Prophet. So what they saw was that the Prophet was being lifted but from the shoulder. And every woman, when it was her night, she would say, bring the Prophet to me. And it would be, she would drag the Prophet from that house and she would bring her, the Prophet to her house. And so Fatima, she's the daughter of the Prophet. So she saw the way that the Prophet would be taken from one house to the other. And she said, why are you doing this to my father? And look at Nabi Muhammad, he knows he has to fulfill the rights of his wives. And then the Prophet ﷺ, every day he would say, Who's, whose house am I going to be tomorrow? Whose house is it tomorrow? Which house was he looking for? The house of Aisha. And all of the women, they re realized, they recognized 
that he wanted to be at the house of who? Aisha. One of the benefits I took from it was one of the reasons why a man would love a wife or his wife so much is that she understands him. It's one of the great characteristics. She's a sharp-minded woman. She recognizes her husband and his needs. He doesn't have to say it. Are you with me? Some women, when her, the man is choking and there's things in his throat, and he's like, oh, she doesn't get it. Stand up, get water. She's looking at him. What's happening? <laughs> Aisha was smart as a woman. And a mithal for that was Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr when he entered the house and he had a miswak in his mouth. This is the Prophet on his deathbed. And he has a miswak in his mouth. What did she do? All he did was, he's sick, he can't talk. He looked at the miswak. What did she do? A smart woman. She stood up, she went to her brother, she took the miswak out of his mouth. Again, she snapped it into half. She gave back Abdul Rahman, the one that he was, the part that he was using. And the other part, what did she do? She put it in his mouth. Again, smart woman. She realizes that he, he's sick. He needs help. So she chewed it for him. And she put it in his mouth. So this is why some of the characteristics why he loved her, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 